Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 4.2. We're going to talk about Beer's Law, which is a lot about what the lab that you're doing has to do with it. So let's take a looky and see. Beer's Law, concentration can be found by spectrophotometry. So what happens is you shoot light through here, and some of the particles will make it through here. So, good. so let's take a look at the formula. A equals ABC. A equals absorbance. Little a equals molar absorptivity, a constant for a particular solution. B is path length, which is the length, really the width of the test tube. And C is concentration, which is molarity. Absorption, absorption is best for the opposite color that the solution is. That's my daughter, Maura, drawing a picture. Say hi. Hi. Okay, I need to get back to work. I wanted to draw you the how on Tara screaming. Uh-oh. Um, so if you are red or orange, your best color is whatever color that is that I can't tell. A student is instructed to determine the concentration of solution of COCl2 um, based on the absorption of light, spectro, spectrometric, colorometric method. Students provided with a 0.1 molar solution of copper 2 chloride, cobalt 2 chloride, with which to prepare standard solutions of the concentration of 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08. This is your lab, basically. Describe the procedure for diluting 0.1 molar solution to the concentration of 0.02 using distilled water, 100 milliliter volumetric flask, and a pipette or a burette. Include specific amounts where appropriate. So, <coughs> um, so what you do is you start with your concentrated one, 0.1, and it's got to go to 0.2. So we're going to do the dilution equation of M1V1 equals M2V2. My first molarity is 0.1, and I need to know how much I need of that. Now, my next one is 0.02. That's my new molarity. And the volume, um, it doesn't say how much, but if I have a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, I think I'll make 100 milliliters. Okay? So V equals 0.02 divided by 0.1, so that's 0.2 times 100, which is 20. 20 milliliters for that math. Okay? So describe the procedure. So what you're going to do is add 20.0 milliliters of 0.1 molar to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask and add enough water, distilled water, to make 100 milliliters. Now when you do this, what I should have, add enough water to make 100 milliliters with constant stirring because that constant stirring means that it's going to dissolve okay student takes 0.1 molar solution and determines the percent transmittance and absorbance at various wavelengths uh, the two graphs below represent the data now this is one of those dumb graphs that just says what's the answer all right here's the answer what's the answer all right here's the answer and if you look it's even the same thing so why would they give us both of these? Uh, I guess that maybe that's 500, so this is maybe 510. Why would they give us both of these? Well, because some teachers do transmittance and some do absorbance, so they give us both. Identify the optimum wavelength. I just wrote it down. 110, uh, you know what I meant, 510 nanometers. That's it. The student measures the absorbance of 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and 0.1 molar solutions. The data are plotted below. Hey, that's almost exactly what you're doing in your lab. The absorbance of the unknown solution is 0 0.275. Absorbance, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Here's 0 0.5, 0 0.275. What is the concentration of the solution? 0.05 molar. Beer's Law is an expression that includes three factors to determine the amount of light that passes through the solution. Identify two of these factors. A, absorptivity constant. B, tube width, and C is molarity. Student handles a sample container, test tube, or cuvette that holds the unknown solution and leaves fingerprints in the path of the light beam. How shamefully should eat Cheetos in lab. How will this affect the calculated concentration of the unknown? Explain your answer. Absorbance would go up because the prints absorb the light. So if they absorb the light, then my concentration, therefore, molarity is too high on the graph. Right? So if absorbance is too high, 
Then graphically, I should I suppose I should. Therefore, graphically, because I didn't do it algebraically, graphically, molarity is too high. Why is the method to determine the concentration of CoCl2 solution appropriate? Where using the same method for measuring NaCl solution not be appropriate. This is colorless. And this is an important thing you need to know, and I'll put it on the next slide. D block single electrons equal colored solutions. And you should know that. I hope you're writing that down, because I know I am. Dink. Errors. Dirty test tube, that's the fingerprints thing. Oh, no. Solution is not stable, so that means if it falls apart, it turns into something else. Or there's so much solid it cannot dissolve. So if that is, and that would be, you know, if I've got my test tube, my little thing here, and I've got solid down here, that would not um, indicate the, mole, the number of moles properly. And that is, I believe, I believe, that is it. Toodles, because we are all blinded by the light.